Get out of here, stalker. Hi guys, welcome to the Stalker Anomaly Beginner's Guide slash playthrough series. With this series, my goal is to help out new players who have never played Stalker before, who've never played Stalker Anomaly before, or have started playing Anomaly but are too lost and have a lot of questions about it. So hopefully with this guide, what I can do is steer you in the right direction, explain a lot of things to the game. There's a lot of things in this game. There's very complex settings-wise and gameplay-wise. So hopefully with this series, I will be able to provide you with the information that you need in order to progress through your journey. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, leave a comment. If you have any questions, feedback, whatever, leave a comment. And uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks. All right, and welcome to the anomaly main menu. Um, so this part of the video is going to be sort of an introduction <clears throat> to how how complex this mod is, and you can pretty much um, customize it to however however way you want to play it. I mean, that's one of the beauties of this mod is that you can pretty much customize it to suit your adventure needs or experience that you want to get out of it so we went into the settings menu so obviously here visual basic this is what you're gonna see um this is my settings so i'm pretty much just gonna i'm not gonna walk through every single setting but uh i'm just gonna flip through it you can pause the video to see what i have um this is what i'm most comfortable with after you know trying out a lot of different things throughout the different iterations of the mod so this is my FOV, the HUD FOV, um, I'm not sure exactly how to explain this. The FOV is your regular field of view. The HUD FOV is, is pretty much the field of view how you would see the HUD. Play around with it. You'll see what I mean. Uh, advanced is where you're going to get all your advanced uh, graphics settings. So I have it, you know, limited to 144 hertz due to the capture card. Uh, when I'm not capturing a uh, video, I have it um, uh, unlimited. So... And it works fine it's perfect so rendering distance there's very few things at least from what i've seen that can cause huge fps drops one is this the rendering distance of the world i've found it to be most comfortable here if you raise it all the way up it's going to try and render absolutely everything in the map and in big maps like zaton or I don't know, the um, swamps, maps like those that are huge. It's your FPS is definitely going to take a hit. It's an old game, but the engine, <laughs> th this engine for this mod is really good uh, in terms of what the vanilla games were. So anyway, so these are the settings, uh, texture, rendering quality. I have it on this. It works fine. Uh, this this thing here can also dip your FPS a lot um, by grass size and grass density. So and grass shadows, obviously, I have that turned off because if you turn this on, it it just screws up your FPS. The lighting, this is what I have it set it to. Um, what can also screw up your FPS is the uh, sun rays mode and the uh, and the quality, but. Uh, this is what I have on. Soft water particles on. Uh, soft particles on. No depth of field. No motion blur. And all that good stuff. So here's your UI, HUD, menu, settings. This is what I have. For the sake of this playthrough, I, I normally play without minimap because I know I'm very familiar with the maps. But and for the sake of this playthrough, I'm going to play with a minimap since this is obviously, you know, a sort of beginner's guide slash playthrough, as I mentioned previously. So we're going to play with the mini-maps. This way you can kind of see, you know, at least against the mini-map, which, which direction we're going. North, south, you know. Um, iron sight zoom factor. This is, um, when you use iron sights, it, it zooms in just a little bit, so it kind of seems like you're focusing in, but if you really want to go hardcore... Um, you take this off. <laughs> uh, normally, w when, I, when I used to stream this game a lot, I just turned this off because I wanted the most realistic experience ever. Uh, this here is um, player animations and sort of um, mask overlays. 
So this is what I have so far. Um, I don't use any of this because it can get really obnoxious. I mean, if you really want to get an immersive experience, like if you're if you're really low on health or if you're bleeding, then like you can't see shit or if radiation effect, you can't see anything. Um, this is what I have it on. So uh, if you also want a hardcore experience, you enable uh, enhanced recoil effects. But, you know, since this is a beginner's guide again, I'm going to play or I'm going to show you things as if uh, you were just starting out and you don't know anything about the game and you don't know anything about the mechanics. So recoil, this screws you up if you're not used to the weapons. This here, uh, when I'm playing offline, I normally have all of these on because it's really immersive. But when you're capturing this game or if you're looking to stream it, um, this I've seen can cause a lot of pixelation. Um, you know, since the, it's a mask overlay, the breathing fog, rain droplets, like all that added up makes it really pixely. So I'm turning it off in the sake of the playthrough because uh, I'm capturing it. But I recommend you to turn this on if you're playing offline. It's very immersive. Weather I didn't touch. It's all default. You can change the weather to whatever you want. If you don't like it raining or if you don't like it, you know, stormy or whatever, or if you want it to be stormy and rainy and all that constantly um you can change that as well this is these are the night settings i have it slightly bright nights due to the fact you know that i'm streaming it and i don't want to pitch black when i'm streaming because otherwise nobody you know can see anything you can even change um the moon phases as well which i think is pretty funny uh sound this is what i have it on um sfx volume all the way up uh, music volume 0.3. I like the music in the background because it's kind of it gives that sort of ambience to it. Sometimes I play without it if I really want to get immersed. Um, environment sounds, uh, everything on. Radio, everything on. There's a there's a built-in radio. I'll show you how to activate it. Um, this game comes with a few uh, DMCA <laughs> soundtracks, so we're not going to be turning it on uh, in YouTube. I mean, maybe for YouTube it's okay, but on Twitch now, obviously you can't really. Uh, play any songs otherwise you're going to get uh, canceled um mouse sensitivity i have it there M aim sensitivity i have it a little bit you know lower because i really like to i really like to aim <laughs> so and these are crowd uh the, the toggling if you want to crouch toggle prone toggle whatever aim toggle this is what i have it on hold alt for button disassembly um this uh so you can disassemble your weapons i'll get into that later and in, in order to disassemble them so you don't accidentally click the disassemble button uh you have to hold down alt which i think is a cool uh feature these are my key binds this is how i have everything set up you can just pause the video if you want to take a look um gameplay this is what i have on you can turn on hardcore ai aim but again that's only for hardcore uh playthroughs and people who really want to get you know screwed up <laughs> um uh, not recommended for beginners because you will die uh, a lot and you will get one shot killed pretty much all the time. So these are the settings that I have. Um, maximum task per NPC, you can change that. Um, I can, let's do it five, why not? It gives you more of a, it gives you more of a, um, gives you more options. So normally when you have three tasks, it just gives you three tasks. And until you complete one or through all three of those tasks, it's going to be the same repeating tasks. So this way you can have more, more, um, variety stealth kills or silent kills, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's an experimental feature as it says here, I have it enabled. I heard it's kind of buggy or whatnot. I don't, I mean, the only stealth kills that I do are from a distance when I'm, you know, using a sniper rifle or whatnot. I rarely use a stealth kill with a melee. <laughs> I never really get close. Progression in gameplay, that's when you're actually in the game. You can tweak that. Um, so it's, it's just difficulty. Uh, disguise, so there's a disguise system built into the game. If you want it enabled, you can enable it. I have it enabled because I think it's very immersive. So if you want to disguise yourself as a faction, you have to put on their armor. Uh, and their armor has to have their patch on. And their armor has to be good quality. If it's sucky quality, they'll see right through it. So... Uh, fast travel, I have it disabled. You can also do a backpack travel, which, uh, which is pretty cool. You can make a stash, um, somewhere on the map. If, uh, you want to return to that spot, if it's a spot that, that, that you're going to frequent, uh, yeah, that you're going to frequent, sorry. Um, you can 
create a stash there and then you can fast travel to it. Uh, that's pretty much it. But I have fast travel off anyway, so. Uh, the zone. This is what I have it set to. Mutants, mutant population factor 0.5. Stalker population factor 0.75. Uh, there are people that just turn this all the way up to fucking yin yang. But uh, <laughs> uh, th these are the settings that I normally play with. Offline combat full. This means um, we'll, we'll get into it later. But this means that even though you're in one map of all the maps, there are still things happening in, in the other areas. And you're going to see them in the dynamic news pop-ups on your PDA that pop up on the left side of the screen. Exclusion radius is 75. Dynamic anomalies, uh, I have that turned on. Um, if you turn it off, it's just going to put the default anomalies throughout the map. And if you've played the game many times like I am, that like I have you'll pretty much know every single time where the anomalies are and you know, it's really easy, you know, but I have it turned on because this way each playthrough gets a little more random. Dynamic faction relations, which means that the relationship between the factions can change. And then I turn all this stuff off. Events, these are, you know, the emissions, size storms. This is what I have it set on. We'll show you what those are when we get into the game if you're not familiar with them. Warfare is a mode that I don't touch. <laughs> It's pretty much, it has nothing to do with the main storyline or anything like that. It's just pretty much, um, you know, Age of Empires or Command and Cocker, but in Stalker. And it's kind of buggy, so. <laughs> there, there's a few mods that fix it, but I don't really play it. Dynamic News, you could choose to see what you want um, to have popped up on, the, uh, on this side of the screen when you're playing. These are my settings, so you can just look through it. And then these are other settings, obviously language English. Discord status I think is pretty cool because um, if you have this turned on and if you have your um, view game enabled on, uh, on Discord or your, your gaming status, it shows you or it shows people if they look over your name, it shows what faction you're playing, what quest you're doing, how much life you have uh, or how much health you have, uh, what difficulty, where you are. It's actually pretty cool. And I have autosaves turned off and all that good stuff. So... Let's apply the changes that I made, and uh, let's go to new game. So here you have your uh, loadout screen. I guess, yeah, I call it a loadout screen. So this is where you choose your faction, your portrait, your name, your starting point, the loadout that you want, and the type of uh, game that you want to play. So let's start off with the character area. You can play all factions. You can play as all factions, um, or I would say as any faction. Um, we're going to start off with Loner, because obviously it says recommended for new players, but the reason why I like starting out with Loner, at least for beginners, is due to the fact that you're starting in an area that's relatively easy. Uh, there's not, you know, there's not too many anomalies there. There's not too many, there's not too much radiation. Um, the factions that are there are not like super duper you know, geared up to oblivion that have the best weapons in the game and whatnot. The mutants aren't the worst mutants in the game. It's a decent area to start out, and on top of that, the loner faction gives you a sort of tutorial quest to get you start off. Um, to get you started off. So we're gonna do fa we're gonna do loners, but you can choose any faction you want. Bandits, clear sky, duty, freedom, mercenaries, military, ecologist, and monolith. Now, uh, we're going to choose that, and now you can choose your portrait. Uh, each faction has their own set of portraits, so that's sort of cool. We're going to choose Strelok. Why? Because, you know, he's the main dude, if those of you played Shadow of Chernobyl. So, we're just going to name him Stalker. Why not? I don't know. Just keep the name Stalker. Sounds cool. Uh, so, starting location... Rookie Village. Now, the only reason why you see one starting location is because we have story mode enabled. So, that's going to... We're going to transition into this area here. So, story mode... This mod comes with three main storylines. And, and each time you complete a storyline, you unlock a new faction. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are because that'll be spoiling it. And I would like you guys to see it for yourself. So, 
The story mode, as it says here, when active allows the player to experience a unique set of story-driven and dynamic quest lines. Story-driven quest lines such as Living Legend, which is the first one, Mortal Sin, and Operation Afterglow are only available for a certain amount of factions. Um, dynamic quest lines, however, can be enjoyed by all playable factions. So, if you want to play the story mode, um, each storyline comes in succession. So you have to beat the Living Legend first, then Mortal Sin, then Operation Afterglow. And, um, and those have consequences in the zone. So there are certain missions that you do for each storyline that has a, a certain consequence. So stuff will change in the zone. It's, it's actually pretty cool. And relationships between factions can change. Um, and if you want to, if you don't want to play story mode, just do, just unclick it. And, uh, now you can spawn in in any of the, in this case, we're loners. You can spawn in any of the loner locations throughout the zone right but since this is a this is a beginner slash tutorial uh beginner guide slash tutorial slash playthrough slash walkthrough slash whatever you're dot 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 we're gonna be playing story mode uh a zazzle mode is pretty much i like to call it stalker roulette <laughs> because yeah you 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 enable this uh obviously you can't play story mode with this on and i'll explain why you enable this you start off with this character but once this character dies uh, you you spawn in as a random NPC in the zone in, in the instance that that you already created. So you don't start a new game. Your game is 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 continuing, but you spawn in as a random NPC. So you could pretty much go and visit your corpse if you wanted to, or the corpse of this guy. <laughs> and that's why I call it stalker roulette. Like you just get put into action with, as a certain NPC. You you know, you have what that NPC had at that point, and it's pretty cool. Uh, survival mode is pretty much zombie horde mode. Um, you just get keep getting attacked by zombies, and pretty much the zombies overrun the zone. It's pretty cool. Accessible zone. So I'm going to explain this in further detail once we spawn into the world, but uh, the zone is map based. So each map is a different instance. And in order to get from one map to another, there are uh, exit points. Um, the accessible zone, this being turned on means that you already have access to all exit points for every single map. If you have this turned off and let's say you're in story mode, you're not going to have access uh, to certain areas until you complete certain quests or until you uh, talk to whoever, okay? But I like, just for the sake of this playthrough, I don't want to have to go searching for people to unlock routes or anything like that. So we're, gonna, we're just going to leave this on. Again, you can play this however you want. Warfare is that weird, you know, Age of Empires mode. Iron Man, everybody knows what Iron Man is. Uh, here you can set it to how many lives you want. It's up to five. And then uh, you can, you know, get an extra life every one, three, five days. But uh, that's more for hardcore players. Campfire mode means that you can save your game at campfires only, uh, which means that you need a set of matches to light the campfire, <laughs> which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool. It's a pretty cool concept. Again, that's sort of a hardcore feature. Agony mode is uh, you cannot save your game if you're injured, bleeding, irradiated in combat or under circumstances of an emission or psi storm. Again. Uh, hardcore. So, and then uh, the gameplay difficulty. So, there's easy, medium, and hard. So, here this description pretty much mm, says it all. Uh, it's related to um, protection against damage, sources, uh, stamina loss, and carry weight. So, the harder you put the difficulty, less carry weight you'll start off with, the more stamina you drain, and the more damage you take. But we're going to do medium, okay? Uh, easy from, I think it's just too easy. Um, so we're going to do medium. I, I know this is a beginner's playthrough, but we're going to do medium. And uh, progression difficulty. So we are going to be selecting, I don't know, we'll just leave it on tourist. Uh, this way you guys can see uh, everything that the game has to offer. The progression difficulty is pretty much the economy um, and your load, your starting loadout. So the higher difficulty you select for progression difficulty, the more expensive things are. Uh, the more expensive traders sell, the cheaper they buy. Um, 
the more it costs to repair things, there's less loot, there's, it, it's pretty much, uh, it's, <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> if you play on survivalist, like, here you go, so for example, if we play on tourist, we got a nice loadout, you know, we have a thousand points to spend on our loadout, so this here is our starting inventory. Each faction has their own starting inventory. Uh, customized to their factions. Some start with pistols, another one start with maybe a shotgun or, you know, depending, again, depending on the progression difficulty. So this is what the loners start out with by default. Uh, pretty much the essentials, right? So here you have a thousand points to spend on a loadout, which is nice. Uh, each item costs a certain amount of points, like the uh, UMP45 costs 600, and so on and so forth. Now, if you were to select survivalist as you could see now we can't select any weapons and we only have 400 points to spend so at this point you're pretty much you pretty much just want to spend it on meds right <laughs> so but we're going to be playing tourist uh again beginner playthrough uh so what i like to do and this is my suggestion if you're starting out i would select the taz uh sawn off shotgun that has two um it has two shots per reload. Why? Because this is the most effective gun for killing big mutants, and um, it's actually it's it's actually a pretty good weapon, <laughs> at, at least for starters. So we spent a decent amount of points on that, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill ourselves up with meds. So we got two regular med kits that I think have three uses each. We have a an army med kit which. Um, has more it it uh, has more characteristics we're gonna get a couple of bandages med kits do not heal bleeds well this one does but regular med kits do not heal bleeds so you're gonna need uh, bandages again this is not uh, this is not a game this is not a casual game okay <laughs> this is uh, has a lot of hardcore elements and survival elements um, so what else are we going to get? We're going to need cigarettes. And what cigarettes do is pretty much they take down your radiation amount. Uh, you know, the irony in that. Uh, smoking cures uh, radiation <laughs> sickness. Um, and then uh, we're going to get some vodka. Vodka also cures radiation, as you can see. And it, uh, it takes away some hunger. And uh, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna get an energy drink, which allows us to have more stamina. So everything is all set up. And if you have any more questions regarding this, say uh, state it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And let's go.